Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad Wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da Habata fillah Shaykh al-Islam ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala then said The sixth level Surrender of the heart to him Isti'ana qalb lahu and that all its inclinations are directed to him and all other tendencies are cut off. So this is the, he's mentioned in the sixth level of Tawakkal. These are levels of Tawakkal. And you can see how they all tie in together, these levels, as Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala mentions. And that what he is referring to are things that deal with the heart. And this is why the mu'min should give the most, uh, give great importance to issues of the heart. And this is where some of the du'at, some of us have failed in the past. We didn't have the proper tarbiyah. And we didn't give the proper tarbiyah. So we busied the people when we came to Islam or those who were born Muslim or came to the da'wah, da'wah to Ahl sunnah that we were deficient in our knowledge of the da'wah to Ahl sunnah and the, the importance that Islam gives to the heart. That's why the Prophet Wasallam said, as we said prior to this, uh, in, in uh, the hadith, where he salawatu rabbi wa salamu alayhi said, inna fi jizid, Mudga. Mudga. Ida salaha salaha jizada kulu. Ida fasada fasada jizada kulu. Ala wa hiya qalb. He said, Verily, in the heart is a morsel of flesh. And if it is healthy, the whole body is healthy. I, I'm sorry. In the body is a morsel of flesh. And if it is healthy, the whole body is healthy. And if it is sick, the whole body is sick. Verily, it's the heart. And so we see all the things that Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah ta'ala, is talking about in here are, are really dealing with the heart. As far as the aspect of ibadah, the fi'l asbab, you know, making, taking action, this is completing that tawakkal. This is the concept of tawakkal in the Ahl sunnah you know, complete tawakkal. And, but the asl is, the origin is, or the foundation, if you will, is that it is a matter of the heart, that you're putting your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That you, are, in this, very important aspect of ibadah qalbiyah you know this this worship that is, is a an action of the heart that you're devoting devoting your heart to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so while at the same time you're doing an action you're putting your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that it will be completed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we gave so many examples so he said that this is the sixth level. He said, so this is how it was explained by those who said that the servant before Allah should be like the deceased person in front of the one washing the body who moves him around just as he pleases whilst he is unable to himself to move or do anything. So this is the meaning of the saying of some of them. Tawakkal is to drop all control over affairs, meaning to submit to Allah's control of you. So this is with regard to other than things which have been commanded or forbidden, being with regard to whatever he does to you, not with regard to whatever he orders and forbids you. So the submission is to be like that of a compliant servant who submits himself to his master and obeys him, and who leaves his personal inclinations and desires for his master and Allah, the one free of all imperfections, and the Most High knows best. So here Ibn al-Qayyum is point is giving us some very important concepts here and one of the things he, he's mentioning those examples 
that when it comes to the commands and prohibitions, those things the Lord Subhanahu Taala has commanded you with, and those things He has prohibited you from, that that requires you to make action. That requires requires for you to make effort, and that's why we don't make ihtijaj bi qadr as we mentioned before. We don't say, "Oh, that's qadr Allah. I drank wine last night. Qadr Allah was smoking weed. Qadr Allah did this. Qadr Allah did that." La, you are responsible. So, uh, with regards to the commands, you know, establishing the prayer, you don't say, "Yep." You didn't make any effort. Oh, I didn't. Qadr Allah, I didn't make Salat, uh, Salat al Fajr in the Masjid. Or Qadr Allah, I didn't make Salat al Fajr at all. I prayed at nine. Every day I pray at nine o'clock in the morning, Salat al Fajr. Yes, Qadr Allah. La. Yes. One aspect of that is, is this is the situation of uh, a person who has a kalimat al haq, yurid, yurid biha al batin. This is the situation where a person, they have something of the truth or a statement of the truth, which the in, what's intended behind it is false. Using truth for falsehood. And how is that? That is because if a person says, it's the qadr of Allah, every day I pray fajr regularly at 9 o'clock, but I, I get to work on time at 7. Right. This means that that person makes zero effort. And then they are saying that this is the decree of Allah. So this is what we talk about, ihtijaj bi qadr, that they're using or abusing the qadr to make a point of, of really falsehood, to make an excuse for their laziness. They're using the qadr as an excuse to, uh, for their shortcomings and their sins. And that's improper and incorrect. <laughs> And so, then Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala, he says, the seventh uh, level, he said, to entrust one's affair to Allah, a tafweed. He said, this is the spirit and the core and the reality of tawakkul. And it means to resign and entrust all of one's affairs to Allah and to leave them for settlement with Him, desiring and seeking that, not due to compulsion and being constrained to do so. Rather, it is to be like the incapable and weak son who has no control over his affairs, who entrusts all of his affairs to his father, who he know, who he, who, he who will know best about being concerned for him, merciful towards him, seeing to all of his needs, guarding him in the best way, and taking care of his affairs. So he sees that his father's taking care of him is better for him than his looking after himself. He sees that his father's understanding whatever is beneficial for him and his being responsible for that is better than his doing it for himself. So he does not find anything more beneficial and pleasant for himself than entrusting all of his affairs to his father. This relieves him of the burden of carrying the responsibility and knowing the burden along with his own inability and his awareness of the complete knowledge of the one he entrusts his affairs to and his ability and his great concern. So when he attains this level, then he will proceed to the next level. So here Ibn al-Qayyim is, is, is emphasizing that these are levels of tawakkul. And here he's talking about the one who makes tafwi, they leave all of their affairs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That doesn't mean they didn't fit as bad. But it means, with regards to the heart, all of their affairs, they made effort, khalas, and they just completely trust and completely just leave their affairs. If you want to make a, a, a physical uh, example, so to speak, it's just as if, khalas, I made efforts, all of my affairs are there. I'm finished. I left it with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is an active thing. It's an action an active uh, leaving to Allah from the heart. So we want to understand that it's not just like you just disregard something. You just say, well, I'm finished with that. Khalas. La. But it's active because it's an act of trust that you are saying you're, you are putting your trust totally in your Lord and leaving your affair totally with your Lord to make it happen. And this is absolutely imperative for us.
as believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to strive to get to this level of tawakkul and this level of iman with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.